Yeah, now we're going to look at this also for information on the short introduction, how to locate electrical problems that you have, that you have problems with signals in your, or in your basically copper bias, because from fiber optics, we have to use other tools to locate errors too. So this is going to be basically about a multimeter, how to use that basically about that as one on the N2, a multimeter to locate electrical problems. So a multimeter looks something like this. You're seeing like this. We have selectors here, DC voltage, AC voltage, resistance, resistance, short circuit with a buzzer. It's kind of nice. And we can measure current too. And we have uh, voltage for hot. And then we have a common that we have to connect. So we have two wires, measure voltage. And then we have a current wire, which is not the same as it's fused. In case you try to measure high current and you're not going to destroy your element, but you have to change the fuse in the element. So make sure, uh, or try not to avoid that unless you have fuses in your pocket. It's replacement. So we have short circuit and wire breakage in our cables. That's basically here's a broken wire and here's a short circuit and wire in here. So we can have either, and here are also short circuits too. Uh, but uh, yeah, and why external damage? It says mechanical damage can often be found by visual uh, inspections here. It is uh, cut. Okay, it is not worth Internal matters, for instance, related bending of cables, they are not hard. They are not that easy to locate, but you can maybe bend and say, okay, here there's not a lot of bending resistance. I think maybe my cable is broken somewhere in here, but that's awfully difficult. But it depends on the cabling. If you say, okay, this cabling is in a door somewhere, so it has been open and closed, maybe it's internal bending. And okay, if it's broken, you're always, you're just, okay, this is done. There's not a lot of, of um, thing to do about it. So how to detect it? So we can say, okay, we can either use an, a, a wire that we know is intact, and then we can measure for one that we think is suspect. And we could also maybe even use e ground as a test wire. And if we can't do that, we can't get access to this stuff. We can use a test wire that we kind of short circuit out here to and say, okay. So measure, say, okay, can you short circuit this one? Yes, I've done that. You need a radio then if this is so. Okay, here's a breakage. So here is our problem. Of course, in the system, this, if this is a single user using, you can look in your system too and say, okay, what is my problem here? Yeah. So that special equipment can be used to locate by calculating distance from testing and location might be possible to locate error by measuring resistance, capacitance, and then so on. And here is uh, test measurements, distance to fault. There's little information on that. So here's one pulse reflection method and transient method and so on. So that's methods you can use, but then Often you need to know a little about the cable itself and so on. So this is just from Wikipedia and there's a link that you can look at. Location, two instruments that you can use. Systematic matter measurement from both sides of the cable. So that's just, so you might not have access to this one. So maybe you need this one and so on. Uh, then we have this 40 20 milliamps. It's a latency signal that's still used quite a bit. So how to locate errors there? And they are usually two wires. You have got here is a, the process, the sensor. Here's a IR module, automation device, or what are you using? Then you can measure here on the sensor itself. There should be voltage over here. And there should be voltage over here in there because there's a resistor sitting in here. And you can use the same for a, a four wire. The first thing you do is, of course, measure the current supply. You do have power here, as there's not much more to measure. But you can measure here too, and here too. So it's about voltage. And there exist special terminals. If this is a terminal block here, anywhere here, that way you can measure 4 to 20 milliamps using a voltage. And you get a reading also in 4 to 20 milliamps. So you can read the signal itself without breaking the, the circuit here which is kind of nice if you are trying to work in through here and checking your signals. Then we're looking at earth faults. Earth faults, if you have those, you get often get noise into your system, so you have to locate those. Then this is, is, 
it's measuring, let's say, voltage. The earth for maybe the fuse has tripped and disconnect the fuse and try to measure resistance between the earth there and your wires. One, two, and maybe over here and see, is the earth somewhere here? Do I have a zero uh, voltage here? Then maybe you can use the buzzer too also. If, if you're disconnected here, you're tripped the fuse. It's voltage if you have the fuse in. So it hasn't tripped, but if you have an earth fault because you suspect noise or something like that, so you can try to do this. Tip the fuse, then you can maybe use the buzzer too and say, okay, if it's buzzing between earth and here, there's a short circuit somewhere in here. And then you can try to locate it just by measuring short circuit here and there. Of course, if it's a short circuit to ground here that gets back to your ground here and you have a fuse in here because the fuse is going to pop. Then another way is to be systematic, disconnect all the cables and then connect one and one cable until you get the earth fault. I say, okay, the last one I did connect, there's the earth fault in it. Here's one that you can use, the, the, this equipment, earth fault uh, monitoring equipment. That's usually for high power system, that's dangerous. The earth fault is dangerous because you can get in contact with high voltage, which, which is going to hurt you. And again, what you can here too, in the, for signals, you know, you can use two lamps. And if there's no earth fault in 24 volt circuit here, you should have 12 volt here, 12 volt here, and they should light with equal strength. So, so, same last intensity, basically. And then you can disconnect all wires and reconnect and disconnect one wire until the lamps, they start to glow with equal intensity. And then you have located your faulty wire, and then you have to find out where it is, replace the wire or whatever. Uh, whatever you have to do. Okay, and then there's this with high frequency noise. We talked about the noise a little earlier in our video here and how to locate that. And here is this electromagnetic noise. So we can use an antenna and detect this electromagnetic noise. Maybe here's a shield or a broken shield. You can see high frequency is just oscillating through my shield or my cable or whatever where we have it use the loop, loop antenna and then I can have a noise detector and say, okay, here is, for instance, a spectrum analyzer or something here is an amplitude for a frequency, high frequency noise. And that might be causing my problem. You can use a frequency analyzer or oscilloscope or whatever to detect this. So that was high frequency noise. It has a little, not much to do with copper, but it has to do with with uh, let's say shielding, improper shielding, improper earth, no uh, braids, high frequency bonding, and so on, whatever problem you have. Uh, yeah. Quick one on, uh, uh, let's say, uh, this was on uh, electrical problems, locking and using a, a, a multimeter primarily, because this is copper, let's say, if you have probably with fiber optics and stuff or bus communication, you need analyzers, you need more sophisticated equipment. But these are, let's say, the legacy signals that you are using, voltage, current, and so on. Use them example, 40 to 20 milliamps, how you can measure to locate those uh, errors. What you need to know is the principle, how they are connected, how does a, a two wire 40 to 20 milliamp signal, how is it connected? So where could they measure voltage? So just not, just not measuring voltage drop or wire, which is uh, nothing. You so said this signal is broken, but you are not measuring the correct location. 